recall that a mixture is made up of two or more different substances that are connected. The substances are not chemically bonded, which means that a mixture can be separated into its original parts. And we have two kinds of mixtures, the heterogeneous mixtures and the homogeneous mixtures. One example, it's a pizza. There are people who don't like some ingredients of a pizza, so they take them out. And that is basically separating mixture. In chemistry, sometimes you want to separate mixtures so that you can recover their original components. Now let's discuss some of the physical methods in separating mixtures. We're going to have filtration, chromatography, evaporation, distillation, extraction, and centrifugation. Sir, I was not ready for that. First, let's have filtration. Filtration separates an insoluble solid, which means one that does not dissolve, from a liquid. This picture shows the filtration setup. So first, you have a flask, a funnel, and a filter paper. What you will do is to pour a mixture of solid and liquid through the filter, and the solid collects on the filter paper. The one that passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate. The one that is retained in the paper is called the residue. At the molecular level, it looks like this. You have to know that the filter paper has pores. When you pass a mixture through it, only the things that fit pass through the filter. And you are actually doing it already. For example, when you prepare coffee. Now I will show you a simple filtration experiment. We need a mixture of wheat flour and water, conical flask, funnel, and a filter paper. Fold the filter paper in the form of a cone and fix it on the funnel. Pour the mixture of wheat flour and water on the filter paper. Wait and observe. Clear water passes through the filter paper and gets collected in the conical flask. The wheat flour particles cannot pass through the filter paper and remain on the filter. This is because the pores of the filter paper are smaller than the particles of wheat flour. What is happening? <laughs> There's so much going on. We're overwhelmed. Okay, anyway. Sometimes the solid particles in the liquid are very small and can pass through a filter paper. For such particles, the filtration technique cannot be used for separation. Such mixtures are then separated by centrifugation. Centrifugation is the process of separation of insoluble materials from a liquid where normal filtration does not work well. The centrifugation is based on the size, shape, density of the particles, viscosity of the medium, and speed of the rotation. Considering these bases, the principle behind is that denser particles are forced to the bottom and the lighter particles stay at the top when spun rapidly. Centrifugation is commonly used in diagnostic laboratories for blood and urine tests. The apparatus used for centrifugation is called a centrifuge. The centrifuge has a centrifuge tube holder called rotor. The rotor holds balanced centrifugal tubes of equal amounts of the solid-liquid mixture. So on rapid rotation of the rotor, the centrifuge tubes rotate horizontally and due to the centrifugal force, the denser insoluble particles separate from the liquid. When the rotation stops, the solid particles end up at the bottom of the centrifuge tube with the liquid at the top. I will show you a simple centrifugation process using a manual centrifuge. A handy centrifuge machine, muddy water, mixture of calcium carbonate in water, four centrifuge test tubes. Take the sample of muddy water and place the test tubes in the centrifuge machine. Now take the calcium hydroxide mixture in the test tubes and also place them in the centrifuge machine. Rotate the machines fast for few minutes. Stop rotating. 
remove the test tubes and observe. We see mud particles and white precipitate have settled in each of the test tubes. This is the process of centrifugation. My two brain cells are really not up to par. Next, we have chromatography. Chromatography is a separation process that requires two different phases of matter. It is commonly used to separate different components in a liquid mixture. For example, a pen. The ink used, the ink used in a pen is a mixture of two solids. Now, there are different types of chromatography. One example is this one, which is a paper chromatography. Chromatography involves the sample being dissolved in a solvent called mobile phase. The mobile phase may be a gas or liquid. The mobile phase is then passed through another phase called the stationary phase. The stationary phase may be a solid packed in a glass plate or a piece of chromatography paper. After the chromatography process, you will have a paper that looks like this. This is called a chromatogram. Chromatography is used to test whether a liquid is a substance or a mixture. It does not separate the entire sample. Just to show you a simple chromatography setup, first you will need a beaker. Then you will pour your solvent or your mobile face. Then you have to cover it for 5 minutes to reach equilibrium. While waiting, you need to prepare your sample. Using a pencil, draw your origin line. It is usually 1 cm above the end of the paper. Then using a capillary tube, put your sample as small as possible. Then put the paper inside the beaker. Cover it and the mobile phase will start to go up. As it goes up, you will see pigments. Now the color of the pigments and the number of pigments will depend on your sample. Pick up the paper when it reaches the solvent front. Solvent front is the farthest distance traveled by the developing solvent. Let your sample dry. Once it's dry, measure the height of each pigment. For example, we have these values. Once you have the measurements, you can now get the retention factor or the RF value. The RF value is the ratio of the distance moved by the substance and the distance moved by the solvent or your solvent front. Therefore, we have the formula RF is equal to distance of the component over distance of the solvent front. Now, let's try to get the RF value of the blue pigment. So RF is equal to the distance of the component, 10 centimeters, over 14 centimeters, which will give us 0 0.71. Now, what does this mean? This means that the blue pigment is almost soluble. Just remember, smaller R values mean larger and less soluble pigment. On the other hand, the higher R value means highly soluble pigments. Now I will show you another type of chromatography called thin layer chromatography or TLC. For this experiment, we will use a TLC plate, a sample, and a solvent. The TLC plate has two sides. Be sure to use the rough side, which is coated in silica for the experiment. Using a pencil and ruler, draw a line 1 cm from the bottom of the plate, then another line 5 cm above the first line. These lines indicate your start and finish. Draw the lines lightly to avoid scratching the silica off of the plate. Next, make a small tick mark in the center of the start line. You will need a tick mark for each sample. Using a microcapillary tube, load the sample onto the TLC plate. To load the sample into the microcapillary tube, simply touch it to the surface of the sample. You will see the sample travel up the inside of the tube due to capillary action. Press the tip of the tube briefly to the TLC plate on the tick mark at the start line. Repeat this process until you have a concentrated point of sample. Keep the sample spot as small as possible in order to maximize your resolution. Multiple brief touches with the microcapillary tube are best. To prepare the TLC chamber, add 5 milliliters of solvent. 
We usually use a 7 to 3 mixture of hexane and acetone. Cap the chamber for several minutes and allow the gases to reach equilibrium. Use forceps to place the TLC plate into the developing chamber. Cap the chamber immediately. The solvent will move rapidly up the plate. If you cannot see the solvent line, try shading the chamber with one hand. Once the solvent line reaches the top line, remove the plate and set it on the bench top to dry. Note, if your sample is not colored, you will have to use a UV lamp to observe the spots. Evaporation separates a soluble solid from a liquid. Soluble means one that does dissolve. Okay? An evaporation setup looks like this. So it is composed of a burner, an iron stand, fuel, a gauze, and your evaporating dish containing your mixture. Okay. The idea is to heat the sample until the liquid turns to gas and leave the solid behind. One example is preparation of salt. Here, the solution of the liquid and solid is boiled until the liquid evaporates into the air. The salt is left behind in its original form. I have here a simple video showing evaporation. Today we're going to separate a mixture of salt and water using evaporation. We're going to need our solution made of salt and water, hot plate, a beaker of water which is boiling with a clock glass on top, and we need our tongs to show the clock glass afterwards. Most importantly, you need your goggles on, you need your eyes to see the results. So we have the solvent, which is the water, and the solute, which is the salt. Remember, the solute dissolves in the solvent. When I pour a little bit of the solution onto the clock glass, the water will start to evaporate. When you separate mixtures using evaporation, you're going to lose the solvent and only be left with the solute. Okay, so our water is just about evaporated off now. So we're left with just our salt on the clock glass, which is our solute. You can see the white salt just left there on the clock glass. So our solvent, which was the water, is gone. Next, we have extraction using separatory fennel. This is the act of isolating one compound from another. Separating funnel is used mainly to segregate two immiscible liquids, for example, oil and water. Oil and water does not and will never mix together. When two immiscible liquids are placed in a separatory funnel, two layers are seen just like this sample. The mechanism involves taking advantage of the unequal density of the particles in the mixture. Oil and water can be easily separated using this technique. An application is isolating compounds from plant materials. This picture shows a sample setup of extraction using separatory funnel. And these are the things that you will need. Iron stand, iron clump, separatory funnel, flask, and your stopper. Separatory funnels are a necessary piece of equipment for many chemistry labs. These funnels are useful in separating two or more immiscible, non-mixing liquids. When using a separatory funnel, keep the following tips in mind. It is important to use a funnel that will hold twice the final volume of solution to be extracted and the extraction solvent. When adding the liquids, support the funnel with a ring stand and be sure that the stopcock is in a closed position. Add the solution to be extracted first, followed by the extracting solvent. Stopper the funnel and, while holding the stopper in place, gently invert and swirl the liquids. Do not shake the funnel as an undesirable emulsion may form. While the funnel is inverted, open the stopcock to release any built up pressure. Close the stopcock and continue to swirl. Open the stopcock again to release pressure. Repeat these steps several times. When the liquids have been adequately mixed, place the funnel back in the ring stand and remove the stopper. Wait for the two liquids to separate. Open the stopcock to remove the bottom layer. Remember to close the stopcock before the top layer reaches the bottom of the funnel. Following these steps will make your extraction procedure a breeze. Next, we have distillation. Distillation is the action of purifying a liquid by the process of heating and cooling. It can be used to separate two liquids that have different boiling points. How? 
it's by heating the mixture to evaporate one of the liquids and then cooling it to condense it while the other remains a liquid. So this picture shows a simple distillation setup. And here are the main parts. First, you have a thermometer, distillation flask, which contains the sample, heat, condenser, water outlet, water inlet for the cooling, and the receiving flask. So the principle behind this is that liquid boils when its vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So you have to remember that simple distillation is conducted at its boiling point. So the higher the relative volatility of a liquid, the better separation by simple distillation. And there are different types of distillation. One application is in crude oil. Here, you will apply fractional distillation in crude oil to give you different substances. The product depends on the temperature. In less than 25 degrees, you will have petroleum gas. In 25 to 60 degrees, you'll have gasoline and etc. Now, I will show you a video showing a very simple distillation experiment. We need a flask containing a mixture of ethyl alcohol and water. The flask is fitted with a gas delivery tube and a thermometer. We also have a spirit lamp, tripod stand, wire gauze, matchbox, beaker filled with cold water, and test tubes. Light the burner and heat the mixture in the flask. Place the test tube in the beaker filled with cold water and put the delivery tube in the test tube. Heat the flask till the mixture starts boiling. Since alcohol and water have a significant difference in the boiling point, they will boil at different temperatures. And alcohol which will boil at a lower temperature will first turn to vapor completely while water will remain in the liquid state at that temperature and hence they will get separated. Note the temperature at which the solution starts boiling. It reads 87 degrees Celsius. Alcohol vapors formed here passes through the delivery tube into the test tube which is kept in the cold water. The vapors condense and turn to liquid alcohol in the test tube. Keep on heating the flask. After all the alcohol gets vaporized, the temperature starts to rise again towards the boiling point of water. The vaporized alcohol is collected in the test tubes in the purified form and all other impurities remain in the flask. And the, I'm just going to start off by saying, like, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, like, I honestly feel bad for you. Like, I, I cannot explain it. Like, I don't have the vocabulary to sit here and explain it. Like, either you get the vibe or you don't get the vibe. <laughs> Guess who's gonna subscribe? Mwah! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah.